long ago in ancient China, beside a high mountain nestled in the valley, was a small village that had no water. Now every day, villagers walked miles to the nearest stream to fetch water to bring to their homes. In this village lived a long-haired girl whose long raven black hair flowed in the wind, reaching all the way down to her heels. She cared for her sick mother, and she raised pigs. Now each morning she would walk great distances to fetch water from the faraway stream, and then climb the mountaintop to pick herbs for her mother and plants for the pigs. One day, while in the mountains, she discovered a huge turnip poking its way halfway out of the dirt. Why, this turnip will feed us for weeks. Hmm. E. Ah. Yep. Son. You. Oh, this is going to be delicious. But that was not the real treasure found that day. For out of the hole from which the turnip was pulled, gushed a spring of fresh, pure water. Suddenly. Oh. The turnip flew out of her hands, plugging up the hole with spring water. I wanted to taste that water. Hmm. E R San U. Oh, sweet as the juice of pears. As if by magic, however. Ooh. Once again, the turnip flew out of her hands, stopping the flow of mountain water. Then, a fierce wind lifted the long-haired girl, sent her swirling high into the mountain cliffs, and she found herself deep in a cave. Standing before her was the hairy spirit king of the mountain. You have discovered my spring water. Tell no one, or I shall take your life. But if the waters are allowed to flow through my village, the people will not have to suffer. Silence! Tell no one, or I shall take your life. Now be gone! Well, once again, the fierce wind lifted the long-haired girl, and this time she found herself at the foot of the mountains. Frightened, she ran home as quickly as she could, careful not to mention a word of the secret to anyone, not even her own mother. For the day that followed, she watched with shame, for she saw how far people still carried the water, and the crops still withered and dried in the fields, and the baby still cried for want of water. She wanted to tell someone of the secret in the mountain. High above the mountain. Tell no one. There is. Or you shall die. I dare not tell. And so the long-haired girl kept this secret deep inside. But because she could see how much the people were suffering, the secret was like a terrible pain in her heart. And it began to change the long-haired girl. And soon her long raven black hair turned all brittle, turned all white. She was dying. Dying from the truth untold. An old man stumbles, carrying heavy buckets of water. Old man, Gungun, you've hurt yourself. Leg is broken. It is my fault. What a coward I've been. She could no longer hide the secret inside. She had to tell. Gungun, listen. High above the mountain, there is a spring of water fresh and pure, sweet as the juice of pear. I have seen it myself. Come, everyone, follow me. When they reached the place of the spring, the turnip was pulled, chopped into pieces, the hole was widened, and out gushed a spring of fresh, pure water, tumbling all the way down to the village. Oh, look, look now. We no longer have to walk miles. <laughs> the long-haired girl, she's vanished. No, she's probably gone ahead to tell her mother the good news of the spring water. But this was not so. You have told the secret of my mountain spring. Now you must die. I will gladly die for the sake of my people. You shall be placed under the tumbling waters. I will gladly place my body under the waters. Suffering a slow death. So that the waters can bring life to my village. But first, 
May I please return home just once more to care for my mother? All right. You may go home to your mother for just one day. But if you do not return, I shall find a way to stop up the spring water and kill all the people. And when you return, place yourself under the tumbling waters by yourself. And do not bother me again. Now be gone. In an instant, she was at the foot of the mountain. Oh, look. Look how beautiful the waters have made my village. New crops were being planted. Green and lush. Where once lay dry riverbeds. Children laughing and splashing. She ran all the way home to her mother. When she got home, she told her mother the good news of the spring water. And lifting a cup of its refreshing waters to her lips, she spoke. Mother, now that the waters have come to the village, I have time to visit my friends on the other side of the mountain for a few days. I'll be safe. I've asked the neighbors to watch over you while I'm gone. You'll be safe. Quickly, she turned to hide her tears. I'm going now, Mother. I shall miss you so much. <laughs> oh, who's that? Where are you going, long hair girl? Oh, who are you? <laughs> Where are you going, long hair girl? Why, little man, you have green hair, a green beard, and you're dressed all in green. Why? <laughs> because I'm the green man. Who else? <laughs> and you are a kind-hearted person. Come, come, come with me. Look and see. I have been carving a statue of stone, a statue girl to look exactly like you. We shall take this stone statue, place it under the tumbling waters. Oh, that spirit king of the mountain, he won't know the difference between you and the statue girl of stone. But it needs one last touch. Your long, white hair. E. R. Sun. Oh, well, as soon as that little man placed that hair upon the head of the statue, it took root and began to grow. She then watched the little man carry the statue up the mountain, place it under a torrent of water, the water mingling with its long white hair. Suddenly, oh, ah, e oh, look, my hair, it is growing. Long hair girl, we have tricked the spirit king of the mountain. You can go home, go home. So she ran all the way down the mountain. Home to her mother. Through the green and lush village. Past the children laughing and splashing. Her long, raven black hair flowing in the wind, reaching all the way down to her heels. <laughs>